case number four, so we have four, five, six. So we have three cases. I'll 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 move very quickly with those so that I allow time for more discussion at the end. So this man, again, one of the really strange cases I've I've been involved in uh, over the last year. 62 year old gentleman moved recently to a care home following repeated and prolonged admissions due to falls and head injuries, which resulted in significant cognitive de decline and inability to cope at home. So this gentleman has a diagnosis of myotonic dystrophy. It's a familial disorder. It happened later. The manifestation happened later in his life. Until last year, until June last year, this man was driving his car without any problems, absolutely no cognitive difficulties, speech was normal, was living at home with his wife. And then he had these repeated falls and, and significant head injuries, uh, I think starting from August last year until January this year. OK, each fall resulted in um, kind of um, bleeding and a stay in the hospital. And there were definitely features of delirium during these hospital admissions. So he was presenting with more kind of agitation, aggression during these admissions. But yeah, just really significant decline from the man he was in the summer of 2019. And imagine, you know, during a short time, he ended up in a care home. Brain CT scan showed a resolving right frontal subdural hematoma and some vascular changes. So his brain, you can call it a vulnerable brain. So he was already, he already had some risk factors for dementia. Uh, he had uh, vascular changes. Um, and then he had these uh, traumatic brain injuries. But as I said, no evidence of significant co cognitive decline before his admission following a head injury in the summer of last year. Um, in November last year, just before they discharged him to the care home, they did an ACE3 and he scored 30 out of 100. He was extremely impaired, although there was no evidence of delirium at that stage. So the delirium has resolved. He remained very cognitively impaired. Now, he went to the care home in November last year, and there was some improvement in his cognition. So, uh, you know, so he was able to recognize his family, his speech was better. And then, unfortunately, he had another fall in January with head injury, admission to hospital, and his cognitive decline kind of worsened again. So, the GP referred him to me in March this year with behavioral challenges in the care home. He was extremely confused. He now became double incontinent and he was refusing to wear his incontinent pads, constantly shouting. And I say constantly, day and night, shouting the name of his wife. And even when the wife was visiting him, he will continue shouting her name because he wasn't able to recognize her. At that time, he was on citalopram. So what, what do you think is going on? Is this dramatic decline consistent with repeated head injuries in someone with, as, as we said, with a vulnerable brain? Or is this dementia? So, so he had uh, definitely vascular changes, bilateral basal ganglion, lacunar infarcts with a chronic small vessel disease. And so definitely, yeah, I agree. So there may be, there was a higher risk definitely of vascular dementia in this case. And then the traumatic brain injury happened. But as I said, would you would you give the diagnosis of dementia to that patient or would you like to wait a little bit more because of these fluctuations in his cognitive functioning? And, and by the way, uh, the last fall he had, as we said, in January, since January, he didn't have any falls. His cognition, unfortunately, didn't improve. Um, I mean, the shouting reduced. Um, the orientation slightly improved. He's able to recognize his family, but he remains really needing significant amount of care, you know, to eat and drink and, you know, for his personal care. So there hasn't been any improvement in his cognition, but there hasn't been any decline since January. I think I'd go with the trauma theory 
and yeah. wait a bit longer in case there's inflammation or anything that can kind of marginally resolve before diagnosing him with what is a pretty devastating diagnosis if you receive it of dementia I think I'd go with trauma first and foremost and then see watch and wait I think is my answer <laughs> and and Jill uh, two consultant in neurologists completely agreed with your opinion <laughs> so they said yes this is not likely to be dementia uh, and uh, this is uh, related to traumatic brain injuries on, as I said, on a vulnerable brain. His brain was already vulnerable, although the family didn't notice any cognitive decline before the major fall he had in the summer. The neurologists were convinced that this man did have some cognitive difficulties before the fall, uh, and then you have the falls. But then, as, as, as you advised, we didn't give the diagnosis of dementia. We gave a diagnosis of cognitive decline following repeated traumatic brain injuries. And we know that people with traumatic brain injuries have definitely higher risk to develop dementia. However, you only need to watch and wait um, so that you see where the patient will plateau. Will they get better? Will, will, will they stay the same? Or will it get worse, which is suggestive of dementia? However, what I've done with him is that when I saw him in March, and due to the significant cognitive decline and the behavioral challenges, I didn't want to try an antipsychotic medication, uh, but I thought I'll try memantine. Now, this is a completely off-license use of this medication uh, in someone with a cognitive impairment and traumatic brain injury. But I thought to myself, you know, there are definitely brain lesions, there is definitely this history of the uh, neurological condition. I'll, I'll go for memantine. There has been some few case reports of using memantine in uh, traumatic brain injuries or other neurodegenerative conditions without, without dementia, and they showed some success. And the introduction of memantine definitely helped the presentation of the patient. So that's that's really, uh, as I said, the lesson from this case is sometimes you just need to watch and wait. You know, you don't have to give the diagnosis straight away, especially in these complex cases.